Good afternoon, amigos, and bienvenidos a Cafecito with Rosie on Air, where you will find pure, positive, and inspiring ideas to help you achieve a thriving, profitable, and successful business. My name is Rosie Paulson, and I'm the owner of Rosie Paulson Enterprises, where I passionately help business owners succeed. My brand promise is knowledge, connection, success. So I take this opportunity to showcase business owners in the areas that are my friends and that they service the community with a servant heart because we all know that putting our clients first, finding the best version of ourselves makes this a better place to live. Today, I am so proud to introduce my really good friend, Yvette Benaroch. Hello, Yvette. How are you? Good, Rosie. Thank you for inviting me. Great, great. And Yvette, your story is just amazing. So you and I met each other on the political arena, but the one thing that we have in common other than our, our conservative values is that we are both business owners and that we thrive on uh, our, our own and um, the companies we own. So tell me a little bit about the company that you own, um, where are you located, and what do you do for people? Okay, so um, I am the owner of Affordable Landscaping Service and Design, LLC. We are a full-service landscaping company out of Marco Island, Florida. Um, and we provide all services regarding landscaping, meaning from designing all the way to maintaining so we do um, landscape design, landscape installation, uh, landscape maintenance, uh, tree trimming, pest control, irrigation, pavers, whatever the customer needs regarding their landscape uh, needs with their home, um, we provide. Good, good, good. Thank you so much for that information. And one of, one of the things that I teach my uh, uh, listeners is that uh, or uh, my business owners, is that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So I like to ask people, who is Yvette? You know, my guest, who are you? What's your background? What's your story? Are you married? You have children? Um, tell me a little bit about Yvette, the person. So Yvette is originally from Puerto Rico, and I moved to Florida uh, about 18 years ago. I am married to Albert Benaroch, which I met here in the United States um, about six months after I arrived. And I have two sons, uh, Zachary, 15, and Daniel, 13. So my story is like many others. We, I moved here looking for a better quality of life. Um, this is the greatest country in the world. Um, I am an Air Force veteran, so I serve this country proudly. And I moved here, got married, and at the time, my husband had a smaller uh, landscape company. And once we got married, then uh, we built it to what it is today, which we have now 48 employees and over 500 customers. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is an amazing accomplishment. Um, so what has been the most famous person that you have done work for? Okay, so we used to maintain the um, the house, uh, uh, Tom Cruise's mom. She used to live here in the island, and we used to take care of that home. Um, but we've also um, uh, take care of a customer that um, some country singer used to own that house. Uh -huh. um, I can't think of the name now. So then when the new customer bought it, um, then we, we maintain that house. Um, so those are the, I think that, the most famous people that I, I serve. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, some of the things that I, I ask people is um, uh, my business owners, uh, you need to find your passion and what makes you tick, right? And that is what you will project to your pain thrive or the customers that know you and then that they will like you and then do business with you. Um, what is the one thing that you consider yourself to be so good at that you can do it on your sleep. 
So I have um, a thing with service is in my DNA. I mm-hmm. serve this country and I always say service is what's going to keep you in business. So in my company, we strive to be the best that we can be at service because I always say anybody can do what I do. Anybody can do landscape. Anybody can, you know, mow a lawn. But when it comes to servicing that customer and making sure they're satisfied, it takes really special people to be able to handle that because, you know, as, we, as you know, we're all different, different personalities. So that's, that's my number one passion, like service. Like I, I want to provide the best service I can. Right. Awesome. Awesome. So we also met on the political arena and that's really where your social media profile has become very strong and very thriving what were you always a conservative you consider or were you where did your political engagement started okay so i've always been a a republican conservative um it's just that i never really got involved Mm -hmm. until uh 2016 and uh, you know then i i got i started a little bit and then once i remember when i met you and then we started the hispanic chapter here in my area um that's when i really got involved and um i've been literally like breathing sleeping politics for the last two years uh, making sure that we can keep uh, this country the greatest country in the world because even though we're not perfect, we're still the best country in the world. Right. And I know by the time we air this program, um, the, we, it's probably going to be closer or um, uh, we will know who will be taking the, the White House. So um, I know you visited re- D.C. recently in the Million million People March, I think that was the call. Um Tell me a little bit about that experience. How was it? Okay, so it was the Million MAGA March, and it was Patriots going to D.C. Um, in in support of a fair uh, election, meaning that we want all eligible legal votes to count. Mm-hmm. Um, our, our elections are sacred. Our vote is sacred. And this is why we are the best country in the world, because of our of our voting system, you know, and we cannot allow um, for electoral fraud um, or the integrity of our election to be questioned. So we went there and it was a great experience. I can tell you like the March um, meeting so many people with over a million uh, people in support of President Trump and um, the uh, fair elections. And it was great. We had a great time. Um, It was happiness, music. You know, it was just wonderful. But then you have uh, the other side of D.C., which I, I I tell people in order to know what's going on, you need to be there. I was there. And once you go into that area, they call Black Lives Matter Plaza, you can feel the darkness. It's like an eerie feeling, very spooky. And you see people, but it's like when you look into their eyes, there's like no soul, no life within them. It's really like it's very sad. Um very scary like you can't be out after 6 30 because they literally come out and attack you and um you know beat you up or you know they kind of look for people that are walking by themselves or they know they can't defend themselves so it's 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 really um it's, it's things you see literally in like um third world countries um and that shouldn't be happening here in the united states Now, one thing that you mentioned one time at one of the presentations that I was blessed to be part of is that a lot of the um, people that have exited from Puerto Rico that come to Florida due to the Hurricane Maria, they're adapting here, right? Um, And everything is new and culturally everything is new. So politics perhaps is one of the things in their back in the back of their mind, because first of all, they have to learn the English language. Second of they do have to help kids uh, through school and stuff like that. But you mentioned that they are actually um, swing voters because they really don't know. They might be Democrats uh, in Puerto Rico, but the reality is because the the system there, it's a little bit different. Like, uh, you know, um, they are 
what we will call the libertarian party is the conservative party over there and things like that. But you talk about education on that part. Why is that so important for people to educate that community um, so they can so they can have their voices being heard? So as, as you know, Puerto Ricans, uh, we are privileged to be American citizens by birth. Um, but we have our own form of government in the island because we're not a state. We're, we're mainly like a, a territory, a commonwealth in the United States. So we have our own form of, form of government, our own politics. So when we move here, it's, it's very different. So um, education, it's, it, it was key for me these last two years, and it will continue to be part of, of what I do on my platform because we need to make sure that we know um, – Puerto Ricans know about the U.S. Constitution. They know about the different party platforms um, because Puerto Ricans are considered swing voters because they vote on issues. And one issue that I know is very important to them, it's it's economy. Um, We all move here looking for a better way of life, better quality of life. And in order to do that, we have to have opportunities to better education and better jobs. Um, so that's like number one key. Um, and also lower taxes. We don't like uh, the government taking our money. So, you know, education is key and we will continue doing that. And I think um, this last campaign, they actually did excellent in that. And we went out, we educated voters. Um, we went out for the Hispanic voters because their values are conservative. So um, they, you know, they, they kind of like, like me, I'm a conservative. So I kind of go with the Republican platform because that's where my values are. And most of the time they don't know that. So it's important that we remind them of that. And, um, and we got, I mean, Florida was one state that the Hispanics delivered to president Trump and we got like over 45% of yeah. the vote. So I, we were very, um, we're very proud of that. Yeah, 47% is of the vote that went to President Trump's campaign was uh, from the Hispanic uh, community. Now, uh, another question, too, is a lot of people says, well, don't mix. But, you know, if you start talking too much about politics, that's going to hurt your business. Was that your case? <laughs> Not really. If, you, if anybody looks at my profile, I have a little smart car and I wrapped it with Trump, Trump stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like an eagle with a Trump wig and so, and I drive, my, my city is very small, so everybody knows who I am. And I'm proudly, you know, I voice my opinion. One thing I say, I treat my customers all the same. I, uh-huh. I you know, so Democrats, Republicans, independents, they all get the same quality of service. And, you know, we don't talk politics when I'm out in the yards, unless, you know, we're like both Republicans and they know, you know, so they, they, they bring politics and we talk about it. Um, uh-huh. But, no, it didn't hurt my business. I actually earned um, some business from it um, because, you know what, we cannot be afraid to be who we are and to express our opinions. And what I say, if a customer is not going to want my service because I am a conservative woman and I, I love President Trump, then I don't need them as customers, you know, and that's the bottom line. Yeah, and I think that's part of knowing who you are as a business owner and who you your thrive is you know not everyone is your uh your paying customer not everyone is the person that you want as a client and uh i think the most transparent you are as a, as yourself um that's the thrive that you're going to attract and there will be the people that know you like you and trust you um so why not being transparent uh, because it will be more difficult to be somebody that you're not than being who you, where you were meant to be, right? Um, one of the, the things I do bring people, um, when I bring people to my show and I ask them for a tip, um, wh- what was one of the tips that people can use as of right now being in your business, on your social media platform, or in your life with your, ma- with your husband, with your children, that people can use immediately and they can make their life or whatever they're struggling with better? Like what is one of, the, say, a book that you probably perhaps read at one time or a, a platform or a app that you use in your phone? What is the one thing that you say, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread? Okay, so the one thing I always tell people, because it doesn't matter how many books you read or how many platforms you use, the one thing uh, that will help you in life, no matter what you do, is 
to love yourself. Always love yourself. Love how you are. Because once